guitar amp maniacs what's up it's pete thorne welcome to the studio hey it's another amps in the zone and this time it's on an extremely rare and unusual amplifier coming all the way from over the pond in england it's a music city 100 watt treble and bass amp so you might be like, what the heck is that? I've never heard of a uh, Music City amplifier. Well, uh, evidently Music City was a store in London uh, in the 70s, and they wanted their own amplifier brand, so they contracted Laney Amplifiers to make this amp for them. This one is missing the logo on the front, but it would have had a Music City logo right here. And what it basically is, is a Laney Supergroup style amplifier. So the Supergroup most famously used maybe by Tony Iommi, I came across a Laney Supergroup around 20 years ago, God, that long. But it was in a local store here in LA, I tried it out and I loved it. It sounded amazing. At the time, I couldn't really afford like a Plexi or something like that, because even then they were getting expensive. But this Laney Supergroup amplifier was reasonably affordable, and it just sounded like humongous and monstrous, and it was like really loud, just like a Marshall Plexi. So I found this picture on the internet. This is exactly like the amplifier that I wanted to buy and that I found in LA. And I went down to the store literally after trying it like the next day with the money and it had been sold 20 minutes earlier. <laughs> so I never got my Laney Supergroup amp. I was so bummed. I put together the cash, went down there and it had been bought out from under me. But anyways, that amp still haunts me to this day. And now I know much more about amplifiers than I did back then, and I sort of know the differences. So the Laney Supergroup does have a lot of sort of Marshall going on in it. So once again, you might be saying to yourself, how does this amp relate to a Supergroup? Well, it's basically the exact same circuit. They would just brand it Music City on the front. So this amp belongs to my friend Matt Brook, and he brought it to Dave Friedman um, to have uh, kind of the clean bell of health put on it and also maybe do some simple little mods if Dave thought he could do anything to kind of improve the tone. So it has had a couple little things down to it to just kind of optimize the circuit. Modding an amplifier doesn't mean you have to add gain or you know gain stages or put an effect loop in it. Sometimes it just means you can change a cap here or there, one little part, and it'll kind of you know liven up the sound of the amp or sweeten the tone. So in getting into the amp amplifier and looking at it, Dave realized it's basically like Marshall Super Bass. And the Super Bass differs from the Super Lead style amplifiers in a few different ways. One of the things about them is the EQ, basically in layman's terms, is a little more scooped, a little less forward mid sounding. And they're kind of generally a little fatter in the front end. There's a little more bass all the way through the preamp. So one of the things that that can do when you're turning up an amp is kind of flub it up a little bit as you're turning it up and getting it into rock and roll distortion territory. And it can sound really cool with like single coils or lower output pickups that some players might really dig it. But if you want it to rock a little more as you increase the volume, it might be a little too fat. So Dave leaned out the front end of the amp just a little bit, but left all the EQ the same. So it's essentially sort of super bass JTM 45 in the preamp with also just a little smidge of lead spec going on and still retains the EQ values and all that like you would find in a Marshall Super Bass. So just like in a Marshall Super Bass, Super Lead, Plexi, or metal panel style amplifier, this amp has two channels with two corresponding volume controls and four inputs, a higher gain and a lower gain input for each channel. But this amp's channels are labeled bass and treble as opposed to like on a Plexi or a Super Lead or Super Bass, they would be volume one and volume two. So the treble channel on this would be just like the volume one on a Marshall four hole amplifier. And the bass side, that would be like volume two or the normal channel on a Marshall four hole amp. Where things differ a little bit from the Marshall thing, this amp has these toggle switches in it, and more on that in just a little bit, and I'll explain what's going on with those. Dave actually modded the toggle on the treble channel, so it does a little something different than it would do stock. So more on that in a second. But one big difference with this amp, too, is that it's got Partridge Transformers. Marshall never used those. They always used the Dagnall or the Drake Transformers. So Partridge Transformers, these you would find in high watt amplifiers and Laney amps. And a lot of people think, you know, the Transformer's sort of the heart of the amplifier, and it's got a sound. So this Laney built Music City amp, essentially a real cool hybrid of Marshall and also Laney and high watt to some degree. My impression of it is that it's got a great, super punchy sound that works really, really good for classic rock or, you know, maybe alternative rock rhythm tones. And then you can boost it with a pedal and it just sounds awesome. And on that song at the beginning of the video, I even used it for bass and it works awesome for bass too, which is, you know, stands to reason uh, it's really similar to the Marshall Super Bass circuit. 
So for the bass, I plugged into the bass channel. For all the guitar parts, I plugged into the treble channel. But I'm gonna play through the amp a little bit more in a bit here to show you like some different boost pedals and dial the knobs and all that stuff. And then one of the things I'm also gonna do is plug into the bass channel with a treble booster. I'm gonna bust out my SG and go for a little Tony Iommi style tone. Okay, so let's get into it. So for all the guitar parts in this video, I'm running through my old Marshall cabinet in the other room. It's a late 70s cab that's got G12M blackback speakers in it, and it's mic'd up with an SM57 and a Audio-Technica 4050 condenser microphone, and they're blended about equal, maybe just favoring the 57 a bit. mods done to this amplifier like I stated um, one of them is this switch right here on the uh, treble channel the main kind of channel for guitar playing they're labeled treble and bass uh, so on the bass channel there's a two-way switch right here this switch basically makes the amp kind of sound like uh, a normal in one position then really dark in the other position on the bass channel uh, the dark position is kind of almost useless I think um, on the treble side, I believe it was a two-way switch and it switched in a bright cap of some sort, I think. Uh, Dave said it was kind of useless before, it just didn't really sound that good. So what he did is he put in a three-way toggle. Now what you can get, and I kind of love this in Marshall style amps these days to do this to them. Got it done on my SL68 and etc. etc. Uh, three-way switch that basically allows you to have no bright cap or 100 PF bright cap, kind of like they used to do in the early JTM 45s and amps like that and then a 4700 PF bright cap, which is like the late 60s through 70s super leads. So uh, I'm gonna show you what the difference in sound is. Let's start with no bright cap, but right now the volume's somewhere around half. It's hard to tell on these knobs because they don't really have pointers on them and I can't really see where they are. So I think it's on about five, but this is the sound with no bright cap. <laughs> okay, here's the 100 PF. And here's the big one, the 4700. Okay, so huge, massive difference. And I did a whole video on this recently on bright caps and how it affects the sound of the amplifier massively. Because of course what's happening there is a whole bunch of signal, especially with that big cap, is getting bled all the way through the pot and just kind of let through. So that's why when you turn the volume way down with the big cap in, it sounds super shrill and kind of like just upper mids and treble, as you bring up the volume, it mixes in more and more bass and fills out and it sounds cool. It's also why it sounds like there's more gain because it's letting a bunch of signal through the pot right out of the gate. Does that make sense? So like upper mids and, and mid range is getting let through the pot. With the 100 PF cap, you're not letting nearly as many frequencies through. It's just the upper end, just like the top end presence frequencies. And that's why it just kind of adds a nice sparkle to the sound. So some people might like that, but I think it's great having the three-way switch so you can get all these sounds. It makes this amp really versatile and really any sort of Marshall style amplifier. I'm gonna turn it all the way down with the 4700 cap and then bring it up slowly until it comes right into the zone and sounds great. <laughs>
By the time it's up about there, the amp, I mean, I mean, how, how high have I got this? I think it's, yeah, it's on about eight right now. And you can hear that compared to a super lead spec amp, it's almost starting to fall apart a little bit, I think on eight. <laughs> Still pretty darn cool <laughs> but it's maybe not quite as tight as i like my amps so once again this amp has the old school kind of super bass style eq it's got a little more bass in the front end generally um than super lead spec and so i find that this amp is better turned down a little bit maybe on five six seven something like that and then maybe you hit it with a pedal and i'll show you what that sounds like uh to get more gain if you want to rather than the on 10 kind of thing that you know Eddie Van Halen was famous for that kind of thing that I think this one just works better at kind of lower settings on the volume control so I'll show you what I mean <laughs> sounds great right there and that's on about yeah six something like that just really works well there and then if I want more I can always nail it with a pedal let's check that out okay so let's check out a couple pedals uh, just for boosting this already really cool crunchy rhythm sound I got going I mean this could be a lead sound <laughs> This doesn't have a ton of sustain, but I love it for rhythm. It sounds great. Now, if I wanted to kick that over the top, here would be a couple of my prime choices. This Coco Boost from Sir. This is a uh, clean boost or mid boost, depending on what side of the pedal that you have on. I've had this pedal for years and I love it. Um, it doesn't add any overdrive of its own. It just kicks the front end of the amplifier and makes it overdrive. Uh, and so if you turn on the left side, it's a clean boost, full range boost, like Mike Ramp style. Turn on the right side, you get a targeted mid-range boost that you can change how much of that boost is happening with this knob. It's also interactive with this other boost knob. And then you can pick what frequency you want with this switch. Anyway, it's a great way to overdrive the front end of an already dirty tube amp. I'll show you what it sounds like. Keeps the amp tight too, you'll see. First, let me, let me turn on the clean boost first, then I'll turn on the mid boost and you'll hear how it stays tighter and sort of focuses the mids and just makes it notch in a cool frequency. <laughs> That's just really cool for making the amp just scream. If that was loud, like with a cabinet in the room, it would just be endless sustain and feedback and everything. You're not adding overdrive. You're just making the amp overdrive more. Uh, here's a couple of, of other drives. Here's my Archer from uh, Rocket. This is like a Klon style. <laughs> Here's a Apex 808 from Maxon. That sounds cool too. I like them all. I actually really like the Apex too. I think the Archer might be a little too fat sounding actually because it's kind of lower mid, you know, and adding its drive and stuff to the thing. But it sounds really good too. <laughs> So 
so I'm just trying to dial in a bass sound right now. So I'm plugged into the bass channel and uh, I jumpered over to the, the treble channel as well so I could blend a little bit of it in to get some clarity. And that's kind of what I got going right now. That sounds pretty cool. Check out what happens when I vary the mid. So you can really hear it clean up um, when I bring the mids way down. And that's because just like on a Marshall, you know, the mids are lossy. So the EQ is lossy in one of these amps. So by turning it down, you're reducing gain, really. So um, I kind of like the sound actually with the mids really low for the bass because I think it'll leave room for the guitars. It also cleans the amp up a little bit. And in order to get the bass cab sound, for everything else in this, I'm recording through my Marshall cab in the other room. But what I'm doing for this is into my Sur Reactive Load, direct out of the Reactive Load into my recording interface. And then I'm using a uh, IR via wall of sound, two notes plug in, of an 810, I guess, SVT style cabinet. Uh, so you're hearing an IR on the bass. Everything else is real cab in this video. Of course I'd be remiss without this amplifier here, which is basically a 100 watt Laney Supergroup. I would be remiss if I didn't try and get the Tony Iommi sound. So Tony, probably the most fam famous user, excuse me, of the Laney Supergroup amplifier. And what he would do, evidently, doing my internet research, because I always wondered exactly how he set it. Uh, but most people say that he turned it all the way up on the bass channel. He plugged into the, the normal channel or bass channel of the amp, turn it way up, crank the EQ, except for the bass, bass off that would be a lot of bass and do the bass channel with the bass up so it makes sense so bass off presence all the way up treble all the way up mids all the way up and the volume all the way up and of course he would hit the amp with a range master <coughs> excuse me one of the most famous users of the range master to boost the amplifier the other folks that did that most famously brian may uh judas priest you know they would run into the darker channel on their amplifiers and then kick it with the treble boost and get this great full proto heavy metal sound awesome so I'm using a Time Machine Boost from Keeley here today. This is pedal I've had forever. It's one of my, uh, it's been in my collection forever. The switch is actually kind of dodgy on it. So I've got it working right now, but if I turn it on and off, it's gonna cut out. <laughs> so what I'll do is show you what it sounds like with the pedal, and then I'll turn off the pedal so you can hear, you know, the difference. Uh, this pedal has, it's basically a Range Master style boost. It's got two different settings though, a 66 setting and a 73 setting. Uh, the 73 setting sounds fatter to me, must just change the transistor or whatever that's doing the uh, the boost. Uh, so the 66 setting sounds more true and accurate to me. Uh, so I'm just going to use that. I've got the volume not up all the way. I've got the boost on about uh, 2 o'clock or something like that. With the intensity all the way up. Let me just show you what it sounds like. Pretty damn cool. If that was loud in the room, I mean, that's a great Black Sabbath. True kind of, you know. I, I don't have the right guitar because this doesn't have P90s, so it would sound a little skinnier and probably have a little more attack with the right pickups. But anyway, pretty cool. So now I'll turn off the boost so you can hear what the amp sounds like without it. <laughs> Right, wouldn't be right at all. But with the Range Master, totally kicks ass. Thanks for watching my Amps in the Zone video on this really unique 1970s Music City treble and bass 100 watt amplifier built by Laney. Really, really similar to a Laney Supergroup amplifier and the Laney Supergroup amplifiers were very, very similar to Marshall circuits, but with a little bit of their own stuff going on. Partridge transformers, 
favoring that Marshall Super Bass style circuit. It's a true hybrid kind of amplifier with a little bit of Laney, a little bit of High Watt, a little bit of Marshall going on. It's got its own great British rock and roll voice. Thanks to my buddy Matt for lending me the amplifier, letting me mess around with it. It was really fun. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe and hit the bell beside the subscribe so you'll get an alert every time I put out new videos. Thanks you guys for watching. I am Pete Thorne. I'll see you real soon. Take care.